Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about a video that, video that I found with the best and most educated vegans on the internet. It's a compilation of their biggest points, their biggest takeaways. And I'm going to go through the first probably eight minutes or so. And we're going to go line by line. And I'm going to give you missing information. They give you data, but there's other data datums that they don't give you that's really important for you to know so this is something i've been wanting to do for a while because i watch a lot of youtube health videos and i hear a lot of misinformation but also there's a need for more information so but when i just found this video earlier today with a compilation of the best of the best and the and their their most hard hitting statements i thought okay now this is the time to do it so um, here we have the first one is Dr. McDougal. I'm not going to edit this video at all. It's, we're going to go on the fly. I have my notes here on my right. But uh, here's this guy asking Dr. McDougal a question. You've been formidable and outspoken about low-carb doctors. I, I want to talk about their motives. Do you believe these people? Okay, I just got to stop right there. These people, I don't like that term. It's very uh, exclusionary. Like, you people need to, or these people are bad, you know, like, I just got to point this out. It's a bad term. I have a lack of integrity, or are they just misinformed? Okay, so these people, the low-carb uh, doctors, do they have a lack of integrity? No. Are they misinformed? No. Now, towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you why Dr. McDougal and, doc and the other vegan doctors on this video why they think the way they think. I'm going to put that at the end. A certain point doesn't really matter, right? Whether they're doing it just to sell books or they're doing it because they've deluded themselves into thinking that this is true. and they. Have okay, so what Dr. Greger here is saying is that the low-carb doctors are uh, profiteers and um, or they deluded themselves. They deceived or fooled themselves into thinking that this is true, that low-carb is healthy. Okay, both of those statements are like they're just out of line but he doesn't know what i'm going to show you really looked at the signs either way what they're doing is they're harming people i've often wondered why it is that some people are so wedded to the idea of low carb um and they'll say you should really have a steak and and it forces them into all kinds of rationalizations like cholesterol doesn't matter i guess saturated fat doesn't matter and okay so this leads us to the first um slide i'm going to show you uh, not really slide, but so what Dr. B Bernard is saying here is that, oh, these low carb doctors are saying that cholesterol doesn't matter and LDL doesn't matter. Well, here's a graph showing of people with heart disease, or maybe they've had a heart attack. This actually is people with a heart attack. Um, it shows 75% of them had normal cholesterol. LDL was below 130. 75% all in this yellow box right here. So if you think that LDL is important for a heart attack, and it's an indicator of, a, of heart disease, this should be 100% would have elevated LDL. Okay, so now there's other studies that show that LDL is not important and cholesterol is not important. And then, But whatever, the point is, if you think LDL is important, then go into ketosis and lower it down. So let's get back to the video. Okay, here we go the links with heart disease and Alzheimer's disease, let's try to discount them. It puts them in a tough spot. And I'm really not quite sure where that motivation comes from. Okay, he's insinuating that there's, is it money? Is it evilness? Do they hate people? Are they, is it egotistical? No, 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 let's not go there. There's science that shows that low carb eating is super healthy. But again, these doctors are missing data. And I'm going to show it to you towards the end here. Rationale would be, well, look, yeah, maybe the low-carb diet isn't really health-promoting, and maybe it isn't that good of a thing. Okay, so he's just uh, pretending here that, um, or assuming that low-carb is, is bad, and he's creating some scenarios. It's better than the alternative, and plus it's what people want, and that's what they're willing to pay for. So, as long as I'm doing somewhat less bad than what somebody else is doing, they'll pretend that being less bad is good. I okay, so what he's saying here is that you, the patient, are pretending that low carb is good because you like to eat low carb. Okay, I just, just nah. Think something less bad is good. It's still bad. It's just less bad. What we should do is have the integrity to tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to show you the truth, and we'll let the chips fall as they may. Just wait till the end here. Here are the 15 leading um, uh, reasons Americans die. The plant-based diet can help prevent nearly all of them, can help treat more than a half of them, in some cases even reverse the progression of disease. For And I like that, what Dr. Greger was saying there. Um, I saw him give this lecture live in Detroit, and I started thinking to myself, well, I've helped people with a lot of those conditions by low-carb ketogenic eating. And that's how I got um, thinking about ketosis versus veganism, and I made a few videos about that. And it all has to do with fixing the mechanism of chronic disease. I got videos on that. But the point here is that, that I'm with you, uh, Dr. Greger, that the vegan diet is better than the standard American diet, but cycling ketosis is better than veganism, and the research proves that. Of disease. For many, many years, there have been doctors who have said, if you're overweight, take out all the carbohydrate, or most of the carbohydrate from your diet for a while, and since that's half of what you're eating, you're going to lose weight. And you take out Okay, I'm stopping him right here. So that's the calories in, calories out theory. And so you got calories coming into the physiology of the body, and there's a lot of stuff here, insulin and hormones and uh, protein utilization and exercise. None of that matters because it's either it's calories in, calories out. Okay, so that's where Dr. Bernard is. Uh, that's what he's talking about. Okay, but we know better than that. All the potatoes and all the bread and all the fruit and all the beans and all the pasta, you'll lose weight. The low carb okay, so I had a patient. He saw my videos and he ran with my information and he did something that I would never ever recommend. He was eating three to four cups of oil per day for six weeks, plus water, plus salt. And I did the uh, numbers on that with my chronometer app on my phone. Three and a half cups of oil is um, 6,683 calories. That is not a low calorie diet. That's 756 grams of fat. And he lost 50 pounds in six weeks and all of his chest pain was gone. He went deep into ketosis. So he corrected his physiology. Now, his physiology was incorrect because he's eating too many carbohydrates. Pro you know, primarily it's going to be bread and sugar. So he eliminated all that. And now you can do um, a high produce diet and still have very low carbohydrate intake. Okay, so this whole calories in, calories out uh, theory, totally bunk. All right, so let's listen to this um, medical doctor talk. Man. They do see results, and that's why they're so successful. You so she's talking about eating a low-carb diet. You lose weight, and it's you get success at the beginning, but then it doesn't last. You have initial results, but those results don't stick. Okay, now let me show you. I have 15 studies that show that low-carb eating, you get to lose weight at the beginning and long-term, and it does stick, and it's better than low-fat eating. So I got 15 studies to prove that she's wrong. What's concerning about that? You will lose weight. Um, however, after a period of time, you say, this is like starvation. Okay, let's stop right there. A lot of these doctors talk about uh, people feel really hungry and now they're starving. So now starvation doesn't happen until you're not eating food for too long of a period of time, maybe 45 days. All right, so you're just hungry. Now, you have you can train your body not to be hungry by getting into ketosis and burning the fat that you're carrying around, and that's the solution for that. Now, when you're eating um, a lot of plants, and I've seen this over and over again, the body needs fat, and a low-fat diet, is a very low-fat diet is actually very dangerous um, unless you end up going into ketosis, but then you got to cycle out of it, and you got to eat some fat that way. So, But the point here is that um, it's super hard to eat low fat because our brains need fat. So people go, they cheat with their low fat diet by eating cheeseburgers. But what Dr. Barnard here is saying is that when you go on a high fat, or not a high fat, when you go on a high protein diet and you get rid of the carbs, people crave the carbs. Okay, I don't really see that to be true that often. Can I bring these foods back and the weight comes back, but, but worse. In that interim, if you're not eating all of those healthy foods, what are you eating? You're eating meat. You're eating heavy cream. And weight 
loss normally causes cholesterol levels to fall, but on these fatty, high cholesterol diets, sometimes people's cholesterols, despite the fact that they were losing weight kind of from semi-starvation, their cholesterol went up, sometimes way, way up. Now, I've seen this to be true, too. It's very rare. I've had hundreds of people get into ketosis. And if it goes way, way up, that's a genetic issue. And basically, it means you're deficient in carnitine. You have to take 2,000 milligrams a day. And two, three months later, that should come down. Let's say it goes from, it's at 400. It should come down to 200 in maybe three months or so. Um, now, let's talk about LDL. So LDL cholesterol carries triglycerides. So let's pretend that this is a triglyceride. That's energy. And the LDL is the bus that carries triglycerides around the body. So when you start, when you get into ketosis, and these guys don't know much about ketosis. They don't study it. But when you get into ketosis, you're using the triglycerides as energy. And so the body makes more LDL to carry more energy out of the tissues into the blood. And your energy goes up and your brain works better. So yeah, your LDL might climb up a little bit. The first thing that drops down is triglycerides. And it's great. And it's wonderful. And you feel great. And then your LDL starts to come down. And that's just how it happens. So not that big of a deal. Give it some time. Let the body sort it out. And when Dr. Atkins himself, um, poor man, when he died of an unfortunate accident, but then there was a big controversy, which I was in the middle of, where he had heart disease that he hid from people. Now let's talk about Dr. Atkins. So I've had vegans send me the autopsy report and the Wikipedia page, and Atkins was fat and he was had heart disease. Well, when he hit his head on the, on the icy sidewalk, and went into a coma. He was 195 pounds. A week later, he was like 258 pounds because they put IV sugar into his arm. And um, so, so Dr. Atkins actually had cardiomyopathy, which is an enlarged heart or a problem with the heart, resulting from a virus. So now you can have um, a virus in your heart causing enlarged heart palpitations, various you know angina, chest pain. Or black mold, I've experienced that. Stachybotrys and Aspergillus niger in my heart. High blood pressure, um, speeding pulse, um, anxiety, pain up the jaw, down the arm. And I went to the cardiologist, and I went to, I got my blood tested, and I did four EKGs. And you know what? Ninety-eight percent of it was normal. I had high lipoprotein A, but I, I'm fixing that now with my diet. And I had one EKG that was off, but I was in Florida, and which is like America's basement. It's so moldy, and it was hot. It was August, and the black mold loved it, so my heart's pounding, and I, I failed an EKG. But my, my other three were normal. So give Atkins a break. Um, you, your diet is unrelated to a virus. You just want to not eat nuts and seeds because they feed a virus. But you can have aluminum or mercury or copper in your heart. You can have... Glyphosate, which is Roundup, chemical toxins in your heart. You can have a parasite near your heart or pushing against it or in it. I've seen all this, and so and it's unrelated to the diet. So um, Dr. Atkins' wife called the vegan medical doctor group, called the PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. She called them the vegetarian Taliban because once he died, they came out with these false reports that he was fat and he was, you know, had heart disease and and uh, false false statements and so there was this lawsuit that happened and dr gregor is going to talk about this lawsuit corporation when i came out with my book against low carb guys sued me for libel i was light making libelous statements get act against atkins i'm saying his diet was bad of course he dropped dead before they were able to carry out their uh, um, lawsuit and they went bankrupt four months after the book came out so they weren't able to uh but I published the uh, the uh, you know the attorney letter online with a point by point rebuttal. Um, uh, I, so I encourage the uh, uh, meat and junk food industry to sue me. I could use the extra traffic. I don't know what the real motivation of people who tell uh, dangerous, dishonest messages are. Okay, I'm gonna get to this um, where he's coming from here in a second. Just bear with us. But what they're saying is dangerous and dishonest. And you can look at it from the cruelty of animals point of view. Okay, so so I'm going to talk about the health aspect to the human body. 
Now, eating meat, um, you have to kill animals in order to get the meat. So is that cruel? Sure, you can think of it that way. But there are some people that just need to eat meat, and I'm one of them. I'm sorry, that's just how it goes. I'd be dead without meat. And that's been proven uh, week after week for my whole life. And if, it, if it's between me and a cow, I'm sorry. The cow's going down, and I'm, I'm the one that's going to live. It's, that's just how it is, and most people agree with that. From the environmental point of view? Yes, the environmental point of view, that's a true statement. I'm a huge fan of, of the environment. It's, I mean, we live here, and we want to have clean air and clean water and all that. And one big argument I just have to say is that cow farts create global warming, and there's research to back that up. There's currently 98 cows in the United States. Well, you know, in 1840, there were up to 75 million bison. So I don't know if that's one of the deals, but certainly there's hormone problems, like they, they put hormones in the feed, and there's uh, polluted rivers, and there's cesspools of manure. Yeah, that's all true, and I'm, I'm totally with you on that. From the human health point of view, any viewpoint you want to look at it, it's dangerous, dishonest, wrong, and harmful. People love you. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video right there. Now, now there's other speakers throughout the rest of this video, and they use words like the low-carb doctors are idiots, misguided, and stupid. And I have to say that that's really bad to say because vegans who are fans of watching these doctors, they'll say, oh, I don't want to be aligned with idiots and stupid and so I'm not going to watch any other videos. I'm just going to stick with the vegans because they're not stupid. Well, it's a, it's, it's a travesty to humanity to make other people think that that group over there, they're dumb. Don't listen to them. That's just, that's just bad. I'm calling out Dr. Um, McDougall for, uh, and, and, these, and there's another doctor later in the video I'm not going to show you. I'm calling these people out for uh, saying, you, don't, don't act that way. Just, that's just bad. Okay. So let's talk about um, what McDougall is saying and why he's saying that and these other doctors too. So here is uh, Dr. McDougall's YouTube channel. And here's a video called, Does Sugar Feed Cancer? And sli this slide here at about 14 minutes and 56 seconds into it, it says, a disclaimer for low carb diet presentations should be law. Okay, here's a, an example of a disclaimer that he would like somebody like me to say, Low-carb diets cause heart attacks, premature death, and sickness. Legal action may follow. So he's basing this statement on four studies, and it says low-carb diets sicken and kill people. Read the entire papers by clicking the links. Okay, now these four papers are relatively new. This first one's from 2010, the Annals of Internal Medicine. The second one's from 2012, British Medical Journal, and it's a review article. Uh, number three, the highly respected PL PLOS-1 journal and um, low-carb diets and all-cause mortality. These are the titles. And the fourth one is 2014, the Journal of the American Heart Association. Um, the name of the uh, subject is Low-Carbohydrate Diet from Plant or Animal Sources and Mortality Among MI Survivors, Myocardial Infarction, infarction survivor, Survivors. Okay, so let's pick this first one. The conclusion, a low-carbohydrate diet based on animal sources. That is technically a low-carbohydrate, high-protein diet, and it's low-fat. It could be moderate fat, but it's not enough fat to get into ketosis. You can't just label this as a low-carb diet. you got to label it as a low-carb, high-protein diet. That's what it really is. The second one, conclusion, low-carbohydrate, pro high-protein diets. This is a high-protein diet, and we know that carbohydrates and protein both act similarly in the blood. They raise up the insulin and the sugar, and they lower uh, the formation of ketones. Okay, number three, low-carbohydrate diets and their combination with high-protein diets. Again, this is a high-protein diet. Now, Dr. Um, McDougall has been writing books since the 1970s. This is the language that they used back then. All right, they, they talk about one macronutrient, low carb, high protein, low fat. But now we got to talk with all three macros. We got to talk low carb, moderate protein, high fat in, as one diet. You can't just isolate the macros. 
All right, here's number four. Um, adherence to a low-carb diet high in animal sources of protein and fat. Again, this is a low-carb, high-protein diet. So all four of these studies have been misinterpreted by the vegan doctors. Okay, now this last study I want to show you, this is new. This is from August of 2017. The authors concluded that high carbohydrate intake was associated with higher risk of total mortality, whereas total fat and individual types of fat were related to lower total mortality. So now they're, they're comparing the two macronutrients. Total fat and types of fat were not associated with cardiovascular disease, heart attack, or cardiovascular disease mortality. Okay, whereas saturated fat had an inverse associated with, association with stroke. So the more fat you ate, the less stroke um, you people, people had. This is a great statement here at the very end of this study. Global dietary guidelines should be reconsidered in light of these findings. Okay, so there you go. There's my update on this whole um, aspect of eating low-carb, high-protein, and then comparing that with uh, lower carb, higher fat, ketosis, veganism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I just wanted to add this missing data. So when you go through, and I do this, and if you're watching this video, you probably do this too. You watch a bunch of different doctors, and when you get to the vegans, it's like, oh my God, that can't be right. It doesn't make sense. Well, now you know why. They're just missing some information. So um, I'm happy to share this information. This is my hobby. Some people collect stamps or they grow roses in their garden. I uh, figure out um, missing information in research and why people say the things that they do and why they do the things that they do. So if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe. And on my channel, hit the little bell to get notifications. And I'll see you at the next video.